Today I'm going to show you how to build yourself a basic trauma kit. Alright, thanks for joining me today. Um, with the recent uh, things that have gone down in Las Vegas, I figured it was a good time to review building yourself a, uh, a basic trauma kit. Um, I saw a lot of people out there watching the videos, um, trying to help people that were hurt or trying to help themselves, but they just didn't have the tools to do it. So what we're going to do today is go over a basic trauma kit. Now don't confuse this with a first aid kit. This is basically a serious injury, stop bleeding type of kit, okay? This isn't a, um, you know, oh, I nicked my finger, I need a Band-Aid kit, you know? That's something that's up to you if you feel like carrying. And this isn't something you carry all the time with you. Um, perhaps when you're going to the range, going hunting, going camping, uh, going to a big event outdoors, unfortunately. Um, this is uh, something you probably want to pack somewhere on your person. Now it looks huge here and I'm going to explain to you what's going on here with all this stuff. Um, the first thing we're going to go through and I'm going to show you is all this quick clot stuff. Okay, you got lots of choices out there. I would suggest sticking with quick, quick clot sponges. Um, they no longer burn. They don't, uh, it's not granules of stuff you pour into a wound. This is something you pack into a wound that will stop bleeding. And they work very, very well. These little sponges will uh, stop very, very large areas from bleeding, okay? Um, if that's kind of out of your budget, because they can be expensive, Walmart sells these, I guess they're endorsed by Lou Ferrigno, but in the camping section, Walmart sells these stop bleeding uh, kits that have two of these uh, packages in them. And this stuff actually works very well. Like I mentioned in a previous video, when I cut my finger really bad, um, I used this and it stopped it right away. It crystallized it right up and it stopped the bleeding right away. So it was really, really good. I mean, this stuff works well. And again, I like to show budget options. So if you can't afford maybe $15, $25 for one of these, these will work. And I think they're two for $4.99. Next thing you're going to want to put in there is an Israeli bandage. Now the neat thing about these, and you'll notice I have a tourniquet here, is again, if you're on a budget, these can be used as a pressure bandage, almost as a tourniquet. You can apply pressure with them. Uh, it can replace the tourniquet in a pinch because in fact it really is a pressure bandage. This is something you'd wrap around and then you tie it down on an area and then you seal it off with the Velcro. Um, these work very, very well. Um, if, you can, if you can afford a tourniquet and this, great. If not, in a pinch, this is better than nothing. And believe me, I bet you a lot of people would have wanted to have something like this with what went down recently in Vegas. Um, next up, we're going to go to the tourniquet. Now, if you want to learn how to use these, there are plenty of videos online. Um, I've taken some first aid classes. I've also watched a lot of those videos. And I'm going to suggest you go to a channel, the guy's name is Skinny Medic. Check him out. He has all the information you would want to know on first aid. He also has information on how to avoid buying fakes. Um, these will run you anywhere from $25, $35, $40. Um, this is a real one, a cat tourniquet. There are different types of tourniquets. This is the one I prefer. Um, but there also are fakes of these going around. And one of the ways to tell is usually this time here will be huge across the whole front of it. Um, some of the older tourniquets don't have, the older cats don't have the red thing. But most of them have this red tip. And also, if you open it up, open it up in here. You'll see all the information up here. It's made in Rock Hill, South Carolina and the national serial number. The fakes do have the national serial number but they'll usually have a big cat and it'll be stitched on here and the printing will be really really poor. Um, another thing to mention on these and another thing to know so you don't get a fake. I'm trying to find it. There it is. It's kind of faded on this one but you can see there's a, a made by date, a made on date. This was made in January 23rd, 2013. So, um, if it doesn't have one of these, it's probably a fake. And that's not an expiration date. That's just the date it was made on. So, you got that. <clears throat> I'm going to pack this back up because I'm going to show you later how you can pack this stuff into a very small package. Alright, next thing is duct tape. Now, I have a roll out here. Of course, you're not going to carry a roll of duct tape with you. 
I have a way that I do it. And I use old cards. Um, you'll get a lot of these cards in the mail. This happens to be a casino player's card because um, we live right outside of Vegas in, uh, in Nevada. And um, you can use those. You can use, uh, heck, probably use an old credit card if you don't worry about the number getting out there. Uh, but yeah, you wrap around a card. This will hold a good amount of duct tape. Duct tape is very, very handy for injuries. And we'll get into one application of that later. I like to throw some wet wipes in there, antibacterial wet wipes. This isn't for wound care. This is to clean your hands off. If you're treating yourself or your loved ones and there's a lot of blood, you probably don't want that on your hands after you're done taking care of them. So these work well. They're small. You can pack them down. If you're not worried about size and space, you can get something like this, okay? Next up, some gauze. This is just a pack that I pulled out of my cert bag. Um, any kind of gauze will do. Definitely handy for wrapping up wounds, wrapping up areas that are injured. After you've packed in maybe a quick clot sponge to stop bleeding. This is something that I've been messing around with. Um, this is a Cheeto Sam Active. These are made by, uh, what's the company again? Sam Medical. And um, these are really handy. They're just uh, basically for packing wounds or putting over wounds. Um, this is more of something maybe you'd put in a first aid kit but it also comes in handy for any kind of traumatic injury. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be a terror attack or a shooting or something crazy. You could lacerate your hand really bad on a handrail or something. Something like this you put over it, it'll stop the bleeding and cover the wound. I like to put in some of these foldable masks. Um, again, when you're out in public, if this is something that you're out in public and there's some kind of debris that happens from some kind of explosion or whatever, it's a good way to protect your, uh, your lungs. These aren't, you know, the greatest masks in the world, but they will protect you good enough to get you out of the area. And lastly, gloves. You can't have too many sets. I think I have about four sets in here. I've really squeezed it down. Um, you want multiple sets <coughs> because you're going to have situations where they may rip on you. They may be just too dirty. Uh, you're going to want to change them if you're, you know, if you're treating one person than another. If you're helping, you know, your significant other and then her friend that's lying on the ground next to her, you're going to want to change gloves so you don't cross-contaminate. Now, how do I pack all this up? Well, first of all, you don't need all of it in one place, you know. Um, you could toss these in your pocket and this in your pocket or in your everyday carry bag or wallet or whatever, okay. So something like this can be brought down to a fairly small size. And let's just say, you know, we're going to use that one clip, quick clot sponge, that and that. And we'll put the mask in there just for good measure. Now, you could put this in some kind of tactical pack. You could put it in a cargo shorts pocket. Um, you could put this in different stuff you're carrying. If you're going to a venue that allows backpacks, just toss it in your backpack somewhere, all in one place. That's another suggestion I'm going to make. If you make one of these kits up, keep it in something, keep it readily available, Maybe on the top of your pack, where you're going to want to be able, to, you're going to be able to grab it easy. Okay. Um, I always suggest putting it in a plastic Ziploc bag. If you pack this right, now give me a second to pack it. If you pack this right, it won't be too huge. Okay. And there you go. And you can stick that in your pocket. You can stick that in a in a bag. And again, you don't need all this either. You know, if you're only carrying your Israeli bandage, maybe you don't carry the tourniquet. If you're only carrying the tourniquet, maybe you don't carry the bandage. It's up to you, however you want to do it. Okay? And that's about it. Now, the neat part about this plastic bag, you notice I don't have a chest seal in here. And that's because I really, of course, I haven't used one. Um, you know, I'm not trained on it. And I'm going to tell you folks, if you're not trained on something, but you're willing to help and you're not grossed out by an injury or something, at least help, you know, do the best you can. You know, I, I know a lot of people will say, if you're not a medical professional, you shouldn't help anybody. But if somebody's dying in front of you, by all means, offer aid, you know, offer to help. Um, this bag, like I said, I don't have a chest seal in here. I'm not real familiar. I know how they work though. Something like this can be cut open, okay, along here on the sides can be put down over a chest injury and where did I put it with your duct tape 
you can seal this up over a chest injury. Now another thing I don't have in here is EMT shears. The reason being is I want this pack to be all non-metallic. I want it to be something very innocuous that you could just walk into any kind of venue that might have screening. Um, this is for protection. This obviously isn't to hurt somebody. So, you know, you want it to be something that's not going to raise attention, not going to weird people out. You know, why is this guy carrying all this medical gear in here, you know? So it's kind of, you know, a way to keep her a lower profile so that you don't draw attention to yourself. And it's really a pretty simple thing. I mean, all this stuff can be stored in different areas on your person, or it can be stored all in one bag in a backpack. Um, these, I know, fit really well into um, cargo pockets if you're wearing pants that have cargo pockets. Um, and again, yeah, it seems like, okay, now i got to carry all this stuff with me when I'm going to a concert or when I'm going to a show or when I'm going shooting. Uh, most of us have shooting bags. This could easily fit in. <clears throat> Actually, a lot of this stuff is from my shooting bag, my range bag. Um, you know, it, it, it just it's part of being prepared. It's part of being aware of the world we live in. And, yeah, it's going to be an inconvenience to toss this in a backpack or stick it in your pocket and your pocket's bulging out or whatever. If you need it, that inconvenience goes away really, really quick. So anyway, that's the video for today. It's just a basic trauma kit. Um, and again, if you don't have medical training, you want to learn how to use some of this stuff, or you at least want to see how it's used. I mean, nothing's going to prepare you for actually using it on an individual. But if you want to see how it's used, I recommend um, Skinny Medic's channel. He's got a load of info. It's uh, Skinny Medic. It's all one word. Um, he's got a load of info on tourniquets, on first aid gear. Um, it's really, really informative. There's a lot of info there. So I recommend his channel if you can uh, check it out on YouTube. And um, that's about it. So I would thank you for joining me today. And I will talk to you guys soon. I probably won't do any more videos this weekend because, believe it or not, I have a big group meeting with our mutual aid group tomorrow here in town. So I'm going to be there. Um, I'll probably be back Monday or Tuesday. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.